hey guys welcome to uh, this uh, video where uh, linux interview questions are answered these are the frequently asked questions uh, i have not uh, posted any videos uh, since long time uh, but uh, uh, i'll be posting all the answers in this video uh, i'll try to keep the video short and informative so uh, what i have uh, decided is i'll make uh, 10 videos uh, with five answers each because uh, uh, i thought uh, doing 50 answers in a video would be too long and uh, perhaps boring so uh, without wasting uh, any more time uh, let's get started uh, uh, the first question was uh, difference between rhl 6 and rhl 7 in that case uh, i have distinguished uh, both of uh, both the versions uh, uh, here i have mentioned 10 points out of which out of which uh, you can uh, even if you remember five points that is more than enough for you uh, like default file system that was used in rhl6 was uh, ext4 and the default file system used in rhl7 is extended file system that is xfs kernel version you can uh, mention the kernel version 2.6 was used in 6 uh, rhl6 and 3.10 uh, is used in rhl7 uh, the third point uh, can be asked as a separate question as well uh, the, which is the first process that starts uh, when a system boots so the answer is uh, init in rhl6 and system d in rhl7 the process id is 1 there are run levels in RHL 6 and uh, same run levels are called as targets in RHL 7. Each run level has its own use uh, like run level 7 if you enter in it or run level in it 0 uh, the system is uh, halt then uh, you have single user mode then 2 run level 2 3 4 not huge not uh, used much and uh, we have run level 5. Uh, it's a graphical user interface and run level 6 uh, is a reboot uh, similarly we have run level 0 target 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 they all have same uses uh, we come to the next page here we have a file system check for checking the file system we have we had in rhl6 e2 fsck uh, and wherein we have XFS extended file system in RHL 7 uh, you can tell the bootloader uh, version 0 0.97 and grub2 in RHL 7 system and service manager upstart system and service manager was is uh, system D in RHL 7 the default firewall that is used in RHL 6 is IP tables the default firewall that is used in uh, RHL 7 is firewall D. Network bonding. Uh, network bonding is nothing but uh, we are teaming, we are collaborating two network interfaces so that uh, there is a high availability redundancy, which I have already explained in my uh, last uh, video. And in 7, it is known as uh, teaming cluster resource manager. In 6, cluster resource manager is called as RG manager and in 7 it is called as pacemaker although uh, both uh, functions in a same way uh, but the names are different. The name, uh, there is a difference in the name. Uh, default database in uh, RHL 6 is MySQL and in 7 it is MariaDB. Okay. Let's come to the next question, uh, hardening. What is hardening? Hardening is the process of securing a system by reducing its surface of vulnerability. Vulnerability is nothing but when your system is at risk. Risk when somebody can enter your system and do whatever you, uh, they want. So to avoid that, there, uh, uh, your system may have unused ports, services or useless software running that may create a weak point in your system. So these weak points may be used by others to enter into your system. System hardening is also called as operating system hardening. Uh, this will help to minimize such type of security vulnerabilities. 
and it is a process of removing all non essential software programs and utilities from the computer i have also mentioned some of the examples a netstat tulnp this is something related to network statistics and the uh, flags or options that are used is nothing but tcp udp list network protocols or ports so this is how you check the open ports and the ports which are not required you can simply uh, close those ports and uh, always use a secure shell to take uh, a session of your uh, system and it is recommended to use a higher port uh, usually ssh secure shell uses port number 22 but it is recommended to use some other port which can be done by going into uh, with the help via editor going into the ssh uh, d uh, config that is the ssh configuration file disable root login it is also recommended that uh, you should not use a uh, root login and create some other uh, user and provide admin privileges to that user and use it with a sudo command this that also can be done using the sshd config file you only have to uh, mention permit root login as no keep system updated uh, always keep your system updated so that uh, any security bug fix or enhancement pack packages which are available will keep your system updated and if your system is upda uh, updated you have a proper security to your system if it's a, a physical server then uh, you better be uh, avoid usb stick connection to your physical system which can be done uh, by uh, creating a file in mode prop d that is no usb and uh, writing this command into that file install usb storage slash bin slash two turn on sc linux sc linux is nothing but uh, the security enhanced linux the default security uh, for uh, linux system uh, a compulsory access control security mechanism provided in the kernel Disabling AC Linux means removing security from your system. And AC Linux has three basic modes: enforcing, permissive, and disabled. This uh, is default mode, which enable and enforce the AC Linux security policy on the machine. Permissive, AC Linux will not enforce the security policy on the system. What it will do is it will only warn and log the actions. disabled means your security linux ac linux is turned off which is not a recommend at all to check the status what is your status of uh, what is the status of your system you can uh, simply uh, type this command ac status okay uh, then we have restrict users to use old password uh, we should uh, remember that uh, nobody should use their old passwords so uh, in order to do that uh, we can go into this uh, file and make the desired changes how to check password expiration of users so uh, if a user uh, want to check whether my password is when is my password going to expire with uh, help of this command we it can be checked and if you want to extend or maximum set maximum number of days minimum number of day, number of days it can also be done with help of these commands okay and m uh, capital m is nothing but the maximum number of days and small m is uh, uh, minimum number of days w is the set of number of days of warning warning means uh, uh, suppose if after 7 days your uh, uh passport will get expire so uh before that 7 days you will get a warning and you must change your password enforcing stronger password it is recommended to uh, use stronger password uh with uh, a lower case upper case special characters numbers so th so that it uh, becomes uh, harder for others to uh, hack into your system so these are some of the points uh that can be explained uh, whenever you are asked what is os hardening i have mentioned here 10 points but uh, if you uh, are uh, explaining some of the points like 
five to six points that is also more than enough so let's come to the next question that is uh, what is sticky bit sticky bit is nothing but a permission that is set on a file or folder that permission allows only the owner of the file directory or the root user to delete or rename the file so it means no other user is given privileges to delete the file created by some other user uh the sticky bit is primarily if you can uh, see it is only used on the shared directories and it is used for shared directories such as where tmp and tmp because users can create files read and execute files owned by other users but are not allowed to remove rename or delete those files okay so i've just given an example over here for example if there is a user abc okay it creates a file named uh, uh inside this folder tmp with his name abc and there is other user okay who cannot delete this file when the temp directory has permission even the tmp delete uh, file directory file or directory has all the entire permission that is 777 read write execute permission if the sticky bit is uh, set on that the xyz user cannot delete that file okay a root user and owner of the file can only remove those files then we come to suid suid is nothing but uh, set user id upon execution it's a special type of file permission given to a file SUID is defined as giving temporary permissions to a user to run a program or file with the permission of file owner so it it is understood that a, a user uh, will be given a temporary access on a file to run uh, who can have the same access or like the owner of the file to better understand a user will get a file owner's permission as well as his user id and group id when executing the file program or command whatever it is similar thing goes with the group id set group id upon execution is a special type of file permission given to a file or folder it is same as giving temporary permission to a user to run a program or file with the permission of the file group okay then uh, we have access control list it provides an additional more flexible permission mechanism for file system it is designed to assist with uni unix file permission access control list what it does it allows you to give permission to any user or group to any disk resource for example if a user is not a member of a created group but still you want to provide read write access what in that case what you will do if you want to provide read write access you can use these commands that is uh, set fsel and get fsel okay and uh, here is an example set fsel hyphen m is nothing but modify the u is nothing but the username uh, you can mention the username and the permission read write execute and the path of the file on which you want to give the permission same thing goes with the group here then we come to the next question that is what is tcp dump and why it is used tcp dump is a command line packet sniffer or packet analyzer tool when something goes wrong with your network what you will do in that case in that case this tool can be used to analyze the network packet that has dropped or uh, whatever has gone wrong with your network interface card this tool can be used to analyze often you see if you can see or it is often used to help troubleshoot network issues uh, it should be used as a root user with or a user with pseudo privilege so below uh, you'll get some examples how it can be uh, if uh, there is a problem with a specific uh, network interface you can si simply type this command that is tcp dump hyphen i eth 
ATS0 is nothing but the name of your interface uh, whatever uh, network interface uh, card name you have you can just mention it over here and uh, TCP dump hyphen R packet file if you have any file to like read you can just mention the file name and you can read it over here similarly it goes with the IP if you want to uh, check the particular host you can mention the host with this command and you'll get the details now we come to uh, what is the difference between Apache and Tomcat and how it works an Apache server is nothing but an HTTP server which can serve any simple HTTP request and whereas Tomcat is primarily an application server which serves requests to custom built Java servlets or GSP files on your server uh, these points are mentioned as uh, the difference differences between both of them why uh, and what are the uses of uh, these services Apache is uh, known as HTTP D D is nothing but the daemon uh, daemon uh, that runs in the background is uh, is a web server and whereas Tomcat is a servlet container so in case if you are using a Java technology for making any web application you will probably use Apache Tomcat and uh, don't get confused Apache Tomcat are the uh, are used are the owner are owning both of these uh, services Apache and Tomcat for uh, a different uh, purpose so if uh, you are using other technologies like Perl uh, PHP or Ruby uh, it is uh, better to use Apache okay the Apache server is set up to run uh, through configuration files in which directives are added directives are nothing but uh, the things uh, how we want the Apache server to perform it is uh, there is a configuration file that is httpd.conf in those configuration file we mention all the details how our uh, apache or our http server will work wherein uh, tomcat receives the request from a client through one of its connectors okay. tomcat compiles a servlet into java bytecode which is executable by jvm and creates an instance of the servlet okay so uh, these were the uh, differences uh, so what I have decided is I will be making uh, uh, at least 10 videos with 5 answers each okay and I have kept it as bullet points so in case if you have uh, interview tomorrow day after tom tomorrow you can just simply have a quick look and revise it so this was uh, regarding the differences and uh, about the topics that I have mentioned okay so uh, no matter if you don't know some answers because every company has uh, different requirements and working standards so it's okay uh, yeah so if you appreciate the video do click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel to get more such videos and also uh, don't uh, forget to hit the bell icon uh, to get the notification and uh, I will be posting such uh, videos uh, more often uh, now and uh, yeah uh, that's all uh, for now thank you all bye bye